This is the Dayton KABD board, and this might be the most powerful DIY amplifier board that I view. In fact, it might even change the way that you build and design speakers. Now this does look a lot like the older KB boards if you're familiar with them, which the basic premise of the KB boards is, well, they're transformers, or you can transform them in the way that you want them to work for you. Some might even say there's more than meets the eye with these boards, including what some people believe to be the best DSP available for DIYers. But more on that in just a little bit. First, some of the other features they offer. They of course have Bluetooth 5.0, so you can connect to them wirelessly. But the thing that's really cool about them is they have all these JST terminals. Now these JST terminals allow you to add a bunch of different functions to it. You can really transform this board to be used in the way that you want it to. So for example, if you want to make a portable unit, you can buy the battery pack and plug it right into the board. Now, if you're confused on where to plug it into, you can just flip the board around and it's conveniently labeled on the back of the board. This takes all the confusion out of wiring this as all you have to do is plug in just that one cable. It really does making building an amplifier or portable unit very simple you can also add things like led lights to show you when the bluetooth is paired or when it is pairing or things like an external antenna to increase your bluetooth range and even a power switch to turn on and off your unit when you're not using it once again, these just plug directly into the board, making this so easy to use. And if you buy the multifunction gable kit, you also get four potentiometers. But why four? This is what really separates this amplifier from a lot of other amplifiers. And that's because it includes this chip on it. This is a DSP chip. Now, if you're not familiar with DSP, it stands for Digital Signal Processing. And there's a lot of different versions of DSP, but this particular one uses one of the most powerful programs on the market for DSP in Sigma Studios. The great thing about Sigma Studios is it's free. But what exactly is DSP? DSP is a digital signal processor. And basically what that means is you can take all of your physical crossover components and you can push them aside because this board can do all of that for you and you don't have to buy any of those components. Now you're probably thinking this must be hard to do. It's actually not, and Parts Express has made it even easier for most people to learn. What you're gonna wanna do is go to Parts Express website. Don't worry, I'll link this in the description and start scrolling down towards the bottom of this page. And wait a second, that's the MK Boom. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but that's a boom box that I actually built on this channel. And if you want to check that out, you can check it out here. That actually uses one of these KAB boards. It's kind of cool. And now if you scroll all the way down, you're going to go to manuals and resources. Now, manual resources, there's a lot of these PDF files that you can download and read. But the thing that I want you to focus on is this zip file. Go ahead and download that zip file. Once you download this file, you're going to see three different folders on here. Now, these folders are labeled by the particular board that you have. Now, I have the KBD4100, so that's the one I'm going to open up. Now, inside here are a bunch of projects that are already designed for you, such as a 2.1 speaker project, uh, a two-way crossover with EQ. Uh, you can even do a two-way crossover project with potentiometer tone controls. That, that gives you actually bass and treble controls. It's kind of cool. And that's why I said that this amplifier can truly transform. I mean, you can see that there's multiple different types of speakers you could do all the way up to a three-way speaker. Now to show you how easy this is, let's go ahead and start with a 2.1 project. So let's go ahead and open that up. If you click on it, as long as you have Sigma Studios already downloaded, it's going to open up this file for you. When you first look at this, this might seem intimidating. Don't let it be. Parts Express has actually labeled everything for you so that you know what's going on. For example, they let you know that once you uh, send this to the board, the potentiometer four is going to be the master volume. Potentiometer three is going to be your treble and potentiometer two is going to be for your subwoofer or your bass knob. The thing that I love about this program is you don't have to understand these functions here. All you have to do is click on them. And when you click on them, it shows you a graph of what it's actually doing. And this is what's so cool about this. And this is what it makes so user friendly. So if we take a look at this base shelf control, we're going to see that uh, the boost minimum is negative 10 and the boost maximum is five. And it shows us that we're centered around a hundred Hertz. Now we can change that to whatever frequency we want. Let's say we wanted to really uh, increase this to say uh, 500 hertz. We could pop, pop that in and you're going to see what it does to those frequencies. Or maybe we want to change the boost max to uh, 
10 decibels. Well, we can once again do that and you can start seeing what it's going to be doing. If once you send this to the board and you don't feel like you're getting enough bass, you can just continue to increase that boost max or that boost minimum until you get the desired response. You don't have to buy any other components. You just change some settings inside this program. It's pretty easy. And you can click on each and every one of these controls to see what it is doing. They also have a PEQ, which is a parametric equalizer. Now, if you're familiar with a car stereo, where you can change it to different things like pop or jazz, that's what this does. This allows you to change the frequencies and you can uh, boost or lower it however you want. Now, the cool thing about this, once again, is you can mess around with it. You can see on the graph what it's doing. And once you send it to the board, if you don't like what you're hearing, you can just change it back. No harm, no foul. And that's what makes this really cool. You can continue to mess with this until you get the sound that you want it to. Now, two-way crossover is really neat. And I'm gonna show you the two-way project with potentiometer tone controls. I think this is where a lot of people are going to be starting. With something like this, you'd buy two tweeters and two mid-ranges. Maybe you wanna make some speakers that go on your desktop that's powered by this amplifier. Since this has four outputs, you're gonna be hooking up each tweeter to its own output and each woofer to its own output. For something like this, you're just gonna set your crossover frequency and the slope that you want to. You can also attenuate your tweeter down some if you want to, but you could also just use those potentiometers. Keep in mind, this board does have four potentiometers and it shows you what each potentiometer is doing. In this particular case, the potentiometer four is your master volume and your other potentiometers are gonna adjust your bass and treble. And you can change that frequency and scale to whatever it is that you think sounds the best. Now, if you really get into DSP, you're probably gonna eventually wanna get a measurement microphone. Now you can get all kinds of different ones. If you're gonna be going into business and you wanna start selling these kits that you're making, then I would highly recommend something like the Dayton OmniMic. If not, I would take a look at one of these more hobbyist microphones. Either one is going to allow you to start seeing the actual frequency response of the speaker after you program the board. And that's gonna give you a major advantage so that you can get this as linear as you want it to be. And that's really the cool thing about this. This program can allow you to get a speaker to be much more linear than really passive crossovers are going to allow most of the time. And that's gonna be something that's really exciting for a lot of people. Now, I know I went over some of the basic DSPs, and that's because that's the ones that Parts Express really has programmed in, but keep in mind that Sigma Studios is so much more powerful than that. In fact, when you start really understanding what you're doing with DSP, you can do some really amazing things. In fact, if you've ever experienced a small Bluetooth speaker that seems to have significantly more bass than you would ever imagine it to at lower volumes, well, they're using something like a dynamic bass control, something you can program in Sigma Studios. Or maybe you want to do super bass or dynamic bass. All these things are options that are in this hierarchy that you can add as you start learning the program. I mean, really, honestly, the possibilities are endless. And that is why I said that this could really transform the way that you build and design speakers. Now, the DSP board isn't the only thing you need, though. You do need something to communicate between the computer and the DSP board. That's called an in-circuit programmer. You just pick one of these up, and all this does is plug up via USB to your computer, and then it plugs directly into the board. This just communicates and sends the program once it's saved onto the board. The great thing about this, too, is once you've created a really good project and you want to start selling these, you can just buy as many boards as you want to and plug each one up to the in-circuit programmer and save the file directly on there. In a matter of seconds, you're gonna have that board programmed and ready for your project. It is a great way to streamline things. Now here's the deal. If you wanted to get started with one of these and you didn't really know exactly where to start, here's what I would do. I would probably get just one of the two channel boards, like the two by 30 board. And I would pick up two full range drivers, something like the RS100 or the PS95. And then start there by DSPing and doing a little PEQ to get it to sound the way that you want it to. And when you do, and you start to realize how amazing that you can make those little speakers sound, jump up to something like the four by 100 and do some 2.1 projects or maybe even some two-way bookshelf speakers. Once you start doing that, I think you're gonna be surprised at the results you get. I would highly recommend that every single person that's interested in doing this, pick one of these boards up just to play with. I think you'll be very happy with the results that you can get. Now, if you're concerned still about learning it, pick up one of the boards, head over to one of the forums, head over to either Parts Express, Tech Talk, or head over to my forum, Toys DIY Audio, 
DSPSubmit.com. We actually have a DSP section right in the forum. You can ask the questions that you want and we can try to help you along the way. We want to make sure that you're successful with this board. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you like videos like this, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to ring that bell. You'll get instant notification anytime I put out a video and it really does help me out. And if you want to continue to help me out, consider becoming one of my patrons like these guys. They help me continue to make videos every month and I really appreciate them. Thanks guys, this is Toys DIY Audio, and I'm out.